Okay, so now that you've installed VMware uh, successfully, you can launch it, make sure it's opening up properly, and we're going to create a VM. Okay, so this is a guest machine. So, File, New, VM. We're going to select Custom, just because it's more fun. And uh, make sure you pick a version that's uh, appropriate for your uh, for your compatibility requirements. Okay, so in our case, I'm fine with 7.1, so that'll be fine. Um, if you need to migrate this VM later to a lower version, it's a little bit more work, but it can be done. Okay, so, um, yeah, we're going to install the OS later, and in this case, we're going to demonstrate, or I'm going to demonstrate, Windows XP Professional. It's easy enough; most of us know it, you know. So I'm going to call this Win XP, and I'm going to physically place this thing on the desktop. Win XP. Okay, so that'll be the name of the VM. Okay, generally speaking, I like to create a directory or a folder whose name matches the name of the virtual machine. The name of the virtual machine is merely an attribute that you'll find in the VMX file. So, all right, let's go with two processors, two cores simulated within the uh, within the VM. And let's give this thing a gig of RAM. Okay, so again, this is all. These are all resources we're going to be allocating to the guest machine, and we're going to bridge the one and only NIC that we have defined in here to the external interface of the host. Okay, so for some terminology again, the guest is the virtual machine itself, which is really just a process or a container, if you like, running on top of the host. Okay, the host being the actual box with the actual operating system. Okay, so. We'll just go next on that. What type of SCSI controller do we want to emulate if we are using any SCSI devices, which we will not be? Create a virtual disk, which will be a VMDK. It's going to be an IDE VMDK. And I'm going to make this thing 20 gigs just for fun. Okay. Now, if I hit this checkbox, we're going to allocate a 20 gig file um, to guarantee that we will not run out of space on the disk. And secondly, for performance. Okay, so the, the guest will be will, will perform a little better if we don't have to continue to grow this virtual disk as we uh, access or allocate uh, blocks that we haven't uh, haven't actually uh, uh, grown into yet. So and we can store it all as a single file just for our convenience. But be careful with this because a this this disk file this VMDK can grow up to 20 gigs in size, and 20 gigs is uh, bigger than what FAT will support and uh, could be very difficult to manage as a single file. Anyhow, we'll give it a name. I like to call my uh, VMDKs, you know, after what they are, actually. So C drive.vmdk makes a lot more sense to me. I hit finish on that. You can see there's a folder now on my desktop, and in this folder, we have a VMX file, a VMXF, a VMSD, and a VMDK, and also a lock folder. The lock is basically to prevent uh, the accidental opening of this virtual machine by multiple uh, VMware. So I'm just going to open up Notepad, use this as a text viewer, and take a look at my VMX file. Here you can see in here a definition of all the hardware that has been plugged in to the guest machine. Okay, so to the guest VM. All right, so this text file is edited graphically by using this tool right here. If I hit Edit virtual machine settings right here I can actually see all those settings in graphical form okay, and I can remove devices, I can add devices, let's add a second hard disk let's say so I'm going to create another VMDK I'm going to make this guy 5 megs, uh, five gigs and I'm not going to allocate right now and I'm going to call this thing D drive okay. what I can do with these disks is I can go to advanced and I can adjust which physical port port, if you want to call it that, this virtual disk will be connected to. Now when I say physical, I mean, you know, the, the device that's simulated within the VM. So here we've got IDE bus number one, uh, bus number zero, and IDE bus number one. So bus number zero has a master and a slave. Bus number one has a master and a slave. Notice the CD-ROM has been allocated to the, be the master on the second bus. So as far as the operating system is concerned, this is the first disk, this is the second disk, this is the third disk, and I have allocated this to be, or I've put it on slave of the first bus. So the five gig disk is plugged into a slave on the first bus, the zeroth bus. Okay. You can also add other network cards. Let's say uh, network adapter add, 
and I'll connect this to something like VMNet3. Okay, now built into VMware um, are these con this concept of virtual LANs, basically a whole bunch of fake switches, and I can connect my NICs, my, my virtual NICs, to any one of these virtual switches. Okay, so this allows me to simulate all kinds of firewall situations and routing situations and all kinds of cool stuff. So, so I'm going to take the second NIC, the second network card, and plug it into a dead switch. Okay, so there's a switch on which only one host is plugged. So we go finish on that guy, we go OK, and one more thing, I'm just going to change this, and added, and that's actually plugged into a switch that's behind a NAT and the NAT is provided by VMware. So here you can see that we're trying to boot this guest but there's nothing from which we can boot. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to right click on the CD down here, go to use ISO image, go to desktop, pull my ISO image and this ISO is going to be physically, uh, virtually inserted into the DVD-ROM of, of this VM. So I do that and then I'm going to reboot the guest by holding down Control alt and then hitting Insert, not Delete. So on Windows, that has been mapped to be Control alt delete And look at what's going on now. Okay, so we boot off of the DVD, and there we go. So this is a, it's actually a fully virtualized machine. Like you can, uh, you can hit F2, go into the Phoenix BIOS that's simulated, or not simulated, that's actually uh, part of the VM guest. Uh, but here you can see the boot screen, you know, the, the install of Windows XP. Alright, so it's obviously pretty fast. And notice here I've got two disks I can select from. Okay, so I can install on the first disk or the second disk. Those are those two disks I, I created. Right? So let's install on that one. Single partition. It's a basic disk, not dynamic, right? Anyhow, I'm not going to teach Microsoft here. It's, it's, I'm sure all you MCSEs out there, MCITPs, are, are well versed in the land of Windows. So we wait. 